God shows up again like he did in times past and began to give Noah this incredible idea about building an ark for safety because the world was going to be destroyed by such a pouring of water that would submerge everyone and everything. Noah wasn't necessarily looking to make history or trying to stand out. He was just leaving the best he could under the circumstances he found himself. It is easier to get carried along by the majority than it is to stand apart, which in situations like that make you stick out as a sore thumb. It takes more courage to stand out in the midst of evil than it is required to roll along. Noah chose the path less traveled and he stood out. Amidst all the terrible things going on then, it was clear that Noah was a good man. While everyone else was experimenting with evil, he stayed away, unstained and undistracted by it all, unfazed by all the violence and corruption that was piling and spilling all around him. He lived just and true among his family and friends. How did he get away living just among such filthiness? Let us not assume or get deceived to think that he was not tempted, mocked, or possibly harassed for choosing to live upright. You and I can already tell the price of choosing to be different in this times and age. How much more then? When God decided enough was enough of evil running rampant on earth he needed one man to save a remnant just one man and guess who that was the very man who has stood unstained and undistracted by all the evil that had become fashionable and popular in his time Noah's walk with God was so pure in a rotten world and such light in a dark time that God took note of him. Noah's everyday mundane life was so sincerely different that at a time when God was considering destroying everything on earth, he looked at Noah and took an exception. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. So God shows up again. He had a plan. He needed a man. And there was Noah qualified to partner with God on this mission to salvage the earth. God gave Noah specific directions on what they were going to do together as a team to save whatever they could of the world that was plunging steadily to destruction. He told Noah what to do, the materials to be used for building the ark, and the dimensions for the construction. Can you imagine how ridiculous Noah appeared before everyone else as he bought materials upon materials, outrageous volumes and tons of materials? Can you imagine how many months he spent measuring and cutting and nailing together as he constructed one part after the other of that massive ark. Can you imagine how he would have been scorned and teased for spending all that resources on a white elephant project as they would have labeled it then? How many would have bedded that he wouldn't finish the nonsense he started and how it was such a waste of time and money. How superfluously laughable it must have been to hear him claim that God asked him to build that, that this good God was going to destroy this wonderful world he created for us all. That water of all things was going to flood everywhere until everyone and everything was gone. And do you believe that, Noah? I'll believe anything if I believe that. Ha 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 ha. That must have
have got some good laugh on poor Noah. Oh, how they must have laughed each day as the old man and his family were bent over in obedience, constructing the unbelievable thing God had told them to build. Let's get your journal. Has God ever asked you to do something ridiculous that made people laugh at you? What was that? And how did he feel being ridiculed while obeying God? How do you feel now about the project and the people who laughed at you? What would you do if God came to you with a crazy idea, which you know could expose you to being derided and possibly disrespected? After I gave my life to Jesus, I went from being a star daughter and student to being the butt of every religious joke, both in my family and in our community. People looked at me with disgust and others with such pity as in, how can such a beautiful, smart girl allow herself to be so deceived by all these no good church people? How did I feel? I didn't care. They were entitled to think and say whatever they wanted. As far as I was concerned, their thoughts and jokes were my problem. It did hurt though when I was humiliated for my fate, but I learned to live with it, to hand it over to God and get past it. Otherwise, I would be stuck, whereas they had moved on and forgotten the hurtful things they said and did. People forget rather quickly, so let it go and hold nothing against nobody. Life isn't always fair, but God is always true and faithful to his promises. If he called you, he will vindicate you in his time, not our time. In the years that followed, the Lord made the distinction as I found grace again and again before his eyes in areas no one ever thought would have been possible for me to be used. It is rough to be a laughing stock, but remember, Noah did everything God commanded him and that made all the difference. If you are sure that you are going in God's way, keep going. God will make things right in the end. He knows how to wipe every tear and clear every shame. But we have to be confident of his word and consistent in our obedience. No matter how awkward the beginning may be, no matter the level of mockery and derision, God gets the last love and so do those who obey him to the end. What is your priority in life? Pleasing God or pleasing everyone that comes your way? It is hard, if not impossible, to please everybody. However, if we can set our heart to the tune of pleasing God, He will cause others to be at peace with us. If we can settle our hearts in the state of God first all the time, every other will fall in place. And this state of mind is a choice. A person whose heart is perfect before God will always stand out before God, no matter their imperfections. To have a heart that is totally sold out to God is matchless. To tune the heart, to be in constant readiness to obey God is such a prize. God will reach for that heart anytime he's ready to make his adventurous moves. He will reach across to save them, even if everyone and everything around them has to go. God will always stand up for those whose hearts are perfect toward him. Yes, he loves to rescue those whose hope are resting in him. What can you do today to set your heart at rest in God? You got this. You can do it. 
Check out the links and scriptures below for additional help. Feel free to share your thoughts and answers in the comments. Be inspired. You are a star and it is your time to shine. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with family and friends. Jump in and join me in the next video still on this series of new beginning titled Welcome aboard.